So now with the launch of the iPhone 13 range, I wanted to give you guys my honest opinion about five reasons why you shouldn't upgrade to the iPhone 13 Pro. Now this is specifically for those that may have the iPhone 12 Pro or even any of the other iPhone 12 models. In case you are deciding to upgrade to iPhone 13, these are some of the things you should be aware of after having seen the event myself. And before you guys say anything, I'm not one of those people that just want to slam Apple for any particular reason. You know, I'm an iPhone 12 user myself. I have the Apple Watch, the MacBook, the AirPods, the iPad. I'm part of the Apple ecosystem and I probably will continue to be so. I've been an Android user for such a long time, but these are just my honest opinions from what I saw in the launch event yesterday about why the iPhone 13 Pro specifically is a little bit underwhelming in my decision to upgrade from my iPhone 12 Pro. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So no particular order. The first reason is this redesign. Now they mention, you know, 20% less of a notch size. On the front, the TrueDep camera system has been re-engineered to provide more display area. The position of the camera lenses at the back, making them diagonal. iPhone 13 has a new look for the advanced dual camera system with the lenses arranged diagonally. For some reason, I'm not sure why anyone would really be excited about that, you know. Hey guys, check out my new iPhone. The camera lenses are diagonal. I bet yours aren't diagonal. You see, it just sounds a little bit strange and it doesn't even stop there. On the back, you'll see our incredible new camera system with beautiful stainless steel trim that perfectly surrounds the sapphire crystal lenses of each of our three new cameras. Really? The stainless steel trim on the camera lenses? Who are you going to be telling about that? And who's going to be really excited about that? Hey bro, have you seen my stainless steel trims on my camera lenses? I bet yours are plastic. And even the color options for the Pro and Pro Max range iPhone 13 Pro comes in four striking finishes, a rich deep graphite, gorgeous gold, beautiful silver, and this all new Sierra Blue. For me, they just seem very outdated, they seem washed out, and they're not exciting or appealing whatsoever in my opinion. Especially that Sierra Blue, I think that's a lot worse than the iPhone 12 Pro, which is the Pacific Blue. This is such a nice blue color. That Sierra Blue looks like a very washed out version of this. So for me, even the colors are not that appealing. So from the design perspective, I don't think there's hardly anything that's changed other than those tiny little things that they wanted to focus on. And it feels like they're scrapping the bottom of the barrel just to find anything to mention why it's different to the iPhone 12 Pro. The second reason are the camera upgrades. Now they've mentioned a few changes to all of the camera lenses on the Pro and Pro Max range. And there are incremental changes, which you know I do appreciate. But do they really make a big difference if you have the 12 Pro compared to the 13 Pro? Let's dive a little bit closer. So the telephoto camera now has three times optical zoom compared to the two times optical zoom for the 12 Pro. Now, I don't know about you guys on how much photography you're doing by using the telephoto lens, but from two times to three times, it's not such a massive difference. And I don't think that's a good of enough reason just to upgrade. Ultra wide camera, this is probably the lens that has the most changes. So now there's autofocus, there's a larger 1.8 aperture, and compared to the iPhone 12 Pro, that had no autofocus and a 2.4 aperture. So there is a bit of a change. So again, it depends if you do use the ultra wide lens quite often, are these changes worth having? And the main wide camera is now f1.5 and it has 1.9 macro pixels. It also allows you to do macro photography so you can get really close to objects. Compared to iPhone 12 Pro, that had f2.4 and it had 1.4 micron pixels, no macro photography. Now again, with this macro photography thing, it is a nice to have feature if you are one of those people that really want to take close up pictures of leaves and plants and flowers. Most likely, you're probably going to use that the first day just to test it out. And I'm pretty sure 90 plus percent of you guys I'm not gonna go back and start using that anytime afterwards. So it's a nice feature, but I don't think it's enough to upgrade from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro. And of course, with these incremental changes, it's nice that they are doing it and it's a step in the right direction. But if you have the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro in your hand and you take a whole bunch of pictures in your day-to-day -day activities, for most of you, 
it will feel like you won't be able to see much difference. Of course, when you do a lot of shooting at nighttime and in low lighting conditions, that's where you might see the 13 Pro a little bit more brighter and you'll see things a little bit clearer. But again, it depends how much of those types of pictures you're taking. In terms of the video recording, the 13 Pro, this is obviously a, a more of an advantage is now they allow you to do ProRes recording at 4K. And for me specifically, this would be more suitable for those professional videographers and filmmakers that use their phone as the primary video camera for all of their filming and shooting. And for those people that do professional post-production editing in apps such as Final Cut Pro, where you can utilize the ProRes recordings to create all of your films. And for me particularly, unless you fall into that category, that wouldn't be enough of a reason to buy the 13 Pro to shoot videos. If you just take general videos, you're out with your friends, or you don't really use it for any professional use, then the video recording capabilities on the 12 Pro is just as good as the 13 Pro. However, I will just say as a caveat, if you are doing professional videos, then the cinematic mode that they launched, I think is pretty great. And that would be, for me, a very good reason to upgrade if I am a professional videographer and filmmaker. So I know there's other companies that have tried that in the past. I know that Samsung have had something similar. OnePlus have tried to do the same thing, but Apple have just took it to the next level and the features that they've showcased for me personally, I think that is great. And if you're buying a phone just for your day-to-day -day driver, then you're probably not gonna use the cinematic video mode that often. And it wouldn't be a specific reason unless you are a filmmaker to upgrade to that 13 Pro. And finally, they have these new incremental changes to the way you take photos as well, like the photographic style filters they've introduced. I feel like those will eventually appear in the previous iPhone models through software updates. So that wouldn't be enough just to upgrade specifically for the 13 Pro. Reason number three is around performance. Now, I do understand that they showcase that the phones are now super fast 5G ready, but they've been doing that for a while now. And it was the same with the iPhone 12. My iPhone 12 Pro is also super fast 5G ready. And what they fail to mention is that unless you live in a very good coverage area of 5G, then you're only gonna get 4G speeds. That's something you'd have to check before you upgrade to see if you're even able to get 5G coverage data packages. But of course, the A15 Bionic chip is the biggest upgrade in performance compared to the A14, which is in my iPhone 12 Pro. And that is just one extra core in the GPU, making it a little bit more faster than the 12 Pro. But what I would say is if you have both of those phones and you hold them side by side and you try to do all of your day-to-day -day activities, like sending your emails, sending text messages, WhatsApp, browsing your social media, posting pictures, taking pictures, videos, all of those kind of things, you may not even notice that much of a speed difference by having the 13 Pro and the 12 Pro because the 12 Pro is pretty fluid, is pretty responsive and it does work very well. So for the majority of you folk that might be thinking of getting the 13 Pro, you most likely won't see much of a difference when you have the 12 Pro unless you're really doing benchmark testing against that. Reason number four, battery life iPhone 13 Pro lasts more than one and a half hours longer in your day than iPhone 12 Pro. Specifically for the Pro models, one and a half hours more battery, for me that personally is very underwhelming. If they had mentioned something like five to six hours more battery life, I think that would be a massive significant upgrade. But you know, if you maybe are on a break at work and you want to quickly go into some gaming on your phone, then you automatically might reduce about half an hour of battery life and that will just maybe give you only one hour advantage compared to the 12 Pro. Now, if you're awake 16 hours of the day, most likely you're gonna be charging your phone one time, maybe during the day, maybe a couple of times, or if you are on your desk most of the day, then you have a charger there and you'll leave it plugged in from time to time. So that wouldn't even make much of a difference, but one and a half hours for me personally is very underwhelming and it's not a reason to really sway away from the iPhone 12 Pro. Last but not least, the fifth reason why I feel like you shouldn't upgrade is the fact of how many things are similar from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro. Now, they've mentioned everything in the keynote event to say what has changed and what is different. What they've mentioned, you know, they've done 20% improvements here, 20% less size of this, and 20% brightness is increased, etc., etc. But what they failed to mention is the other 80% is exactly the same. Now I'm on this site, GSM Arena. I use this site to do a comparison side by side with a lot of phones. 
So let's go ahead and let me just showcase to you guys how many things are exactly the same. So on the left hand side, you'll see this is the iPhone 13 Pro and on the right hand side, this is the iPhone 12 Pro. So let's dive in, start with the body. Pretty much it's almost exactly the same size. It's very minuscule, but you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The 12 Pro is actually a little bit lighter. Um, the 13 Pro weighs a little bit more. Everything else is pretty much exactly the same setup. Display wise, again, everything is the same apart from now you have the 120 Hertz refresh rate for the iPhone 13 Pro. What they mention is that the brightness is 20% more on the 13 Pro, mm -hmm. which is clearly you can see that here for the peak brightness, 1000 nits compared to 8000 nits. But what they don't mention is that the maximum brightness that each of these phones go to are exactly the same, which is 1200 nits at its ultimate peak. Size and resolution, almost exactly the same. Protection, you know, they mentioned that it's a little bit more durable with the screen protector that they have on the 13 Pro but everything else is pretty much exactly the same there. In terms of the OS, you'll have iOS 15 right out of the box, but that will be something you can upgrade to. The Bionic chip, obviously that's the biggest difference there. Five core versus four core. Memory, so you can get up to one terabyte now for the Pro Max on the 13 Pro, but you have very similar storage options on both phones. Now I've spoken a little bit about the camera and the differences that have already been introduced. So I won't cover this one in too much details. The selfie camera, however, is exactly the same. There's no change there. The communication channels is exactly the same as well. The core sensors and the features, they are exactly the same. Battery, we don't have the information just yet at the time of this video of what the capacity of the 13 Pro battery is, but like they mentioned, is 1.5 hours more than the iPhone 12 Pro. So 2,815 for me personally, you know, that's still a little bit underwhelming, but based on their software updates that can actually last a full day. And some of these other updates haven't been updated just yet, but as you just seen, for the majority of the things, they are exactly the same. So if I could sum up basically the entire event for the iPhone 13 specifically, I would say it's underwhelming, it's predictable, and it's in true Apple fashion. Most of the time when people wait for big launches, they expect drastic changes. But if you are maybe thinking of buying the iPhone 12 Pro instead of the brand new 13 Pro, then this is one thing also that I don't like is with the Pro and the Max models, what Apple do is they stop selling them on their website, but they will only sell the standard 12 and the 12 mini options, forcing you to upgrade to the new Pro and Max models. So for example, I'm here on the Apple website. This is for the new 13 Pro. If I go over to iPhone, you'll see you can buy the 13 Pro, the 13, and then the 12. What you can't do anymore is buy the 12 Pro or the 12 Pro Max by them. So if I do a search for iPhone 12 Pro, you'll see it doesn't show up, but if I hit enter, it only gives you these options. And it's a bit of a shame, but if you do want to buy the iPhone 12 Pro, then you'd have to go to a different retailer other than the Apple website. So for me, personally, I feel like the 12 Pro would give you the better value if you are looking to save some money and still get a very great phone. So maybe even if you go to somewhere like eBay, you can save three, 400 pounds compared to the new 13 Pro and still get a decent phone. So that's my two cents. And hopefully, you know, you guys felt the same way as well. If you guys feel different and you feel like it is definitely worth upgrading to the 13 Pro, then drop a comment. I'd like to hear your feedback as well. If you did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I've got plenty of iPhone related videos coming out in the near future. New videos out every week. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those ones. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. This beautiful design is the same.